Number 27 is really, really mean. You have to memorize a lot of stuff and the math itself is kind of hard. But this is one of those questions that separates the people who just like kind of know math from the people who really know math. Because if you really know math, then weird numbers don't scare you. You trust the process and you just keep going even when numbers get messy. And I promise they are gonna get messy here. So the first thing that we should kind of think about is we're going to need to uh, do a little get a bit of get back to basics here. Um, we see that we're talking about a circle, so we kind of need to make sure we know the overall circle formula, right? The y equals mx plus b of circles. And that is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared, where hk is the center of the circle. Now we don't actually care about the center because of the question. But we're going to need to basically find the center in order to do this question. We need to get our circle equation, which does not look like this at all, back to this basic formula, okay? So it is important that we memorize this kind of formula, and there's gonna be more memorization as we go through. So the first thing we should do is when we have 2x squared minus 6x plus 2y squared uh, plus 2y equals 45. In order to do this circle formula, we need to get the 2s out of those x squareds and y squareds. That's not supposed to be there. So we have to move the 2 to the other side. And when we do that, you're going to see that we're causing our first problem, which is even though everything on the left is divisible by 2, and we're able to get to x squared minus 3x plus y squared plus y, we're left with this messy number on the right-hand side. And we could convert that to a decimal. We have a calculator, it's the calculator section. But I don't know the decimals make this easier here. So I just, for now, I'm just gonna leave it as 45 over two, see where things go. Now we get to the other piece that we need to memorize in order to do this question. And this is something that for whatever reason, everybody learns, but nobody remembers. We need to know how to complete the square. This is a way of factoring that produces a very specific situation. So notice that in the original um, formula for circles, what we have is we have factors, we have these like factor looking things, x minus h, but they're squared. They're squared factors, meaning there's two of those being multiplied together. Well, we complete the square to square these factors. This is what we want in the circle formula. And so sometimes we use this with parabolas to find the vertex form of the parabola. That is probably the only other time that complete the square is a useful thing. That parabolas and vertexes and circles. Usually it's not such a big deal to do this complete the square, but this time because of the numbers, they're, they're a little messy. So the process for completing the square is whenever we have like this half a quadratic, we're going to take half of the B term and square it. Okay, so for the x squared minus 3x piece. We're just kind of ignoring the y's for a second. So for x squared minus 3x, in fact, let me write it out a little bit separated here. The b term is the negative 3. So we take half of that, which is negative 3 halves. Yeah, it's messy. And we square it, and we add it in. So it's a real mess, um, but we need to do it. And so what happens here is we, we can't just go adding a number to one side of an equation. So let me, let me show you what happens, I guess. We're gonna then have x squared minus three x plus nine fourths, right? Three halves squared is nine fourths and the negative goes away because we're squaring, it, okay? And the reason this is important is then that we can turn this into a factor. It's actually x minus 3 halves squared, right? We completed the square. So the, the second step here is to turn it into a factored form. So turn the result 
into a factored squared term. Okay. However, we have one more step. We just did a bad thing in math. We just kind of randomly added 9 fourths to our equation. We're not allowed to go doing that. You can't just add numbers to equations. You have to balance things out. So we need to balance, in this case, by adding the same number to the other side of the equals. So if we had the uh, 45 halves off by itself before, now we have to add in 9 fourths to balance the 9 fourths that we, had it, we added in on the left side of the equation. So we got a lot of messy numbers, but it's okay, that's just, that's just math. Sometimes the numbers are messy, we trust the process. So we're gonna trust the process again, this time for the y terms. I'm gonna use a different color, so here now we're gonna focus on the y's. So we're gonna have plus y squared plus y half of the b term. Well, the b term in this case, it's one y, right? There's a one in front of that y. So half of one is one half, and we have to square it. So that gets added in. So that really means we're adding, we've got y squared plus y plus one fourth, which we can then factor into y plus a half squared. But we're not supposed to have just this, um, this random thing here, so let me add the one-fourth to the other side as well for balance. We can't just go adding one-fourth. We need to balance it out. So when we do that, we can now kind of clean up this right side, and that's the radius side. So that's the side we want to kind of solve anyway. We found the rest. We found the left side of the equation, which tells us the center. So the center in this case, it doesn't matter, but it's 3 halves comma negative a half. Right, so we flip the sign for both of those pieces, but we've got the center. The other piece, well, 9 fourths and 1 fourth, that's 10 fourths, which is 5 halves. And then the 5 halves plus the 45 halves is 50 halves, which is really just 25. And since... 25 is equivalent to the radius squared. That tells me that the radius by itself is 5. <sighs> yeah, this one is rough. This is really, really, really hard. So what are we supposed to do when it gets this bad? Well, we can skip it, right? This question is not worth any more or any less than all of the other questions in the SAT. So we just did a lot of a lot of effort, a lot of time to earn the same 10 points that we could have gotten from any other question. So this is a good example where if you don't feel confident right away that you're going to be able to deal with circles and deal with completing the square and deal with fractions, you should skip this. Just pick a letter and move on. Don't worry about these 10 points. You should be able to pick up other points in other places first before you really spend the time on this. And plus, remember, even guessing randomly is a 25% chance of getting those points. So it's not bad odds. You're better off using your time on the grid ends where you won't be able to guess randomly because the numbers are, you know, grid in. So I don't really have much advice here other than try your best to memorize whatever you can so that you're prepared for these really weird situations and so that you're confident when the numbers get bad that the process is still going to work. Good luck.